Today in the lab, we're talking to the lecturer at the School of Social and Cultural Studies at Victoria University, Dr. Sara Rahmani. Sara's research is focused on meditation movements, atheism and non-religion, and contemporary religious, religious change. Sara is currently involved in a collaborative project on Māori atheism, exploring the individual's socio-cultural and historical processes contributing to Māori deconversion. Tēnā koutou katoa to your audience. Uh, ko Sara Rahmani tako inua. No e rāna aho, uh, he pūkena aho ke te herana waka. Tēnā koutou. Um, my name is Sara Rahmani. I'm originally from Iran. Uh, I've been lucky to be able to um, come to New Zealand, uh, experience this slice of the world, um, and get an education here and, and a job, which <laughs> I get to do um, what I love and I get the pleasure to um, learn about different people's worldviews, their understanding of the world, and get to know really cool, amazing people, actually, um, through both my research and teaching. Cool. So tell us a little bit about some of the research you've done and things that are happening now. Um, so I've been working on a strand, um, a series of uh, research throughout my postgrad degree, but the common pattern or theme has always been about religious change, leaving religion, um, what does it mean to be an atheist, what are the diversity of non-religion, non-belief, agnosticism, what happens when atheists meditate, like mm. what are those, um, uh, what happens to, for instance, uh, what changes occur at the level of self-understanding, at the level of understanding the world, and so on. And this time around, when I was lucky enough to have a job at Victoria, <laughs> um, in one of my classes, uh, which is called God, God's Godlessness, um, one of my students brought up um, that we were discussing atheism in the class, and he pointed out um, this group, Atua Kore, uh, which is a community of Maori atheists and free thinkers um, and on Facebook. And I was blown away. I immediately want to mo wanted to know more. And so what happened was I applied for a little small grant um, to get this project kickstarted. And so um, that was about two and a half years ago now. <laughs> and, right. and this project has now grown into a much bigger collaborative project. Um, trying to understand experience of being an atheist in this community, um, what are the causes or factors um, leading to the rise of atheism, uh, and so on, yeah. Cool. That sounds really interesting. What are some of the things you're thinking about, you may discover, what are you looking for, um, those kinds of things? Yeah, so basically, um, I mean, in New Zealand, if we look at the census um, on the category of people who say no religion, this has been constantly on the rise, mm -hmm. right? And I'm really excited to see actually the results of the uh, this year's census to see where, where that is leading us. <laughs> but if we look at the previous patterns, we see... Um, the category of no religion has been growing. But what does that even mean? Yeah. Uh, and, you know, what does it encompass? Because, you know, when you actually take a closer look at that broad category of no religion, it can have people who are spiritual but not religious. It can have people who are atheists. And atheism comes, again, in uh, diversity and different attitudes and flavors, right? Uh, it could encompass people who are agnostic and so on. So really, I wanted to understand um have that that piqued my interest of what's happening here but also what is happening uh with um for uh the rise of this category amongst maori so the right. uh you look at that sort of um the census data uh between 2006 and 2018 uh the category of no religion grew from 36% to 53% Mm. And that kind of coincides with a decline in Maori affiliating with Christian denominations. 
So what's happening here? What are the cause of um, deconversion? And by deconversion, I mean that process of leaving a religious worldview behind, um, leaving that sort of uh, any idea of and kind of disassociating and rejecting um, religious beliefs. So that's really has always been my interest in understanding what is that process, the ways in which people tell you that story, they, the, what are their reasonings for leaving religion, and um, what are the factors at the personal level, at the societal level, that contribute to um, this process of leaving religion um, is what I was interested in. And of course, in Ottawa, in this kind of complicated context, um, there are other factors that are at play. And so our project is um, paying attention to those kind of intersectionalities between the history of colonization, the Christianization uh, of Maori, those mission uh, missionary activities, what are those impacts and what are the impacts of um, cultural rev revitalization policies, the mm -hmm. impact of social media, online platforms where people can, you know, have that opportunity to get together. Because with atheism, the, the difference here is that it's usually disorganized. It's not, you don't have a church to attend to. There's no kind of mm -hmm. space to find locality and people can meet. And so, uh, online platforms become a quite an important, a space for people to connect to each other. So what are the role and um, influence of all these different factors in the rise of uh, atheism? Uh, so that's what I'm doing and what, what I'm interested oh. in. <laughs> that's awesome. That's really, really big. There's lots in that. And I don't envy you at all. <laughs> and taking on, that's a huge thing. But um, yeah, from my own experience, um, I think, um, atheists being not organized as I've, I've heard it put it's like herding cats and um, it pretty much is because in my experience most atheists are very very free thinking and willing to accept or not accept but uh, challenge their own thinking a lot and so it's really hard to get people to converge on one point maybe I don't know that's just sort of what I've um, uh, experienced but um, so uh, for the Māori perspective, uh, the Māori um, research you're doing, how's it going? It's got to be an interesting journey. It is. It is endlessly fascinating, and it's such a um, privilege for me to actually, you know, um, get to know people, get to be involved in this project. It is a massive privilege, and I will tell you, it, it keeps me up at night. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, it's this constant sort of like uh, negotiating. Is this actually a, a research that I should be doing? You know, all those ethical mm. questions come to play. Um, how can I uh, best represent the participants, their views? Um, it's it's really interesting, challenging, massive learning curve. Because um, as I said, I didn't grow up in New Zealand, so right. at the same time, I'm you know having to learn about the history. I'm having mm. to learn, um, and, and it's, yeah, it's a massive privilege, and it's a very, very interesting <laughs> project, <laughs> if I can say that. Yeah. And it's going, it's going well. Um, so as I said, it's, we've start, I've started it a, a, a while ago, and it's been growing, and now I have a really um, excellent team of colleagues um, who uh, are working with me, collaborating on this project, and so I, um, I get to kind of draw on their expertise in different areas as well, which uh, which is really helpful. <laughs> and yeah, and it, yeah, and should I kind of tell you about what I've found so far based on the- Yeah, absolutely, if that's yeah. fine with you, yes, please. Yeah, so um, so we've, I'm, I'm calling it now the pilot study, <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the first few years. Uh, it was basically about trying to understand what does it mean to be an atheist? in the context of Maori culture, and because Ma Maori culture is often perceived to be permeated with spirituality. So what does that mean? And how do people n navigate that world and so on? Um, and from my conversations uh, and my team's conversations with people, um, the first few things that kind of jump out um, when, you, when you look at stories uh, next to each other is that people describe 
becoming an atheist as a kind of two-staged process. The first one involves kind of the conversion from Christianity. And this is possibly because a lot of the people we spoke with, they were socialized or grew up in a Christian household. So at first, it's like rejecting um, Christianity. Um, and, um, and this stage kind of typically coincided with things like leaving home, uh, enrolling in university, obtaining higher education, reconnecting with Maori culture, learning Tero, and so on. And so part of that reasoning and stories that people told about leaving Christianity um, or becoming an atheist from that side was framed as an expression of resistance against the colonial system of belief. So it's kind of like I'm rejecting the uh, and I'm quoting here, the white God of the Bible, for instance, right? Um, and there were other critiques, of course, uh, that play into that. Um, but then, so that's, people described it as the first sort of stage. And, and there are other sort of doubts and criticism that would ha people have, for instance, the behavior of other churchgoers. You know, I, I was experiencing hypocrisy, uh, this community is quite dogmatic, they're misogynistic, they're homophobic, narrow-minded, and so on. So there's a array, like a, a, a diversity of moral criticism as to why I'm leaving aside Christianity. And then there comes the, the second stage of now, what do I do with uh, Maori spirituality, traditional Maori beliefs? This mm -hmm. so it comes like that stage of, okay, um, how do I interpret that? And, and we found that people um, have, their, their approach here is a little bit more complex and it can be seen on a continuum between um, some of these Maori beliefs are also superstitious, they are metaphysical. And so if I want to kind of con be consistent in my, um, at, uh, in my kind of worldview, therefore, um, I would also be kind of rejecting that. And by that, we don't mean rejection of culture, of course, right? Because yeah. and, and that's another hmm. thing I would like to address. Um, uh, so there's a continuum between um, kind of having a, what we call a positive atheism, a metaphysical materialism, everything that is supernatural phenomena is kind of rejected, to another side of the spectrum would be having interpreting it in a different way. These are metaphorical interpretations. Mm. The stories that there is a spirit in the river is not to be taken literal. You know, it's for us to kind of harbor gratitude towards the environment, towards nature. So those are the kind of spectrums that uh, we found from the sort of early stage of the research. And so it's a lot more complex and people can take the kind of uh, spectrum between kind of naturalist, total rejection of supernatural to a kind of agnostic or uncertain position or uh, metaphorical interpretations of it. Yeah, Does that's, that um, yeah, I, I, I think I can say that I'm probably at the far end of um, the, I reject everything supernatural, I'm sort of in that position. Um, yeah. and But I do know other people in our community who have, sort of at the other end as well as you described and I also want to say you know, I absolutely um, uh, recognize those two stages that you've laid out that first rejection of the Christianity um, because of that was the colonizer who bought it kind of stuff and then turning that same hard lens towards our own beliefs um, mm -hmm. so um, I absolutely recognize that and that's sort of really really interesting to hear that other people are thinking that way as well. So um, thank you for that. Hey, this has been really, really interesting. I wish I could talk for hours. I'll be <laughs> happy to. <laughs> yeah. um, so are you having trouble finding participants, which is another thing? So, yeah, a little bit. Um, so and I think, the, well, so far we ha I have spoken to 17 individuals. And, and for this bigger project which is part of the explaining atheism um yes. project and that's an international kind of group of um, researchers looking at the same question of what are the causal factors of atheism what is contributing to the rise of atheism globally 
Um, so um, each of us are looking within a particular context and I'm looking obviously in Otoro. Um, and yes, you know, to, to reach our kind of fulfill um, that goal of having um, probably around 40 interviews um, would be our um, sort of goal. Uh, and it's been a bit slow. Um, and I think I'm, I'm trying different methods, actually. I'm trying to, um, I've noticed that, you know, um, interviews that I've had so far are of a particular generation. Right. So reaching out to younger folks, it's been a little bit of a challenge for me. And I've been trying to kind of connect via social media. TikTok is a massive thing. <laughs> And yeah, I, I've been doing a lot of research cool. on TikTok. It's a fascinating space. Um, but yeah, I, I, it has been a little bit slower than I hoped. Right. Um, and my guess is that it's, you know, there are a lot of people, but it might be a bit difficult um, to want to kind of come and openly talk about it. And I just, now that I have this platform, I'd like to say that participation is anonymous. Um, only I will be aware of the person's identity. None of our team, uh, nobody else would know who they are. And um, if they choose to be named, of course, they will be named. But um, otherwise, it will be um, treated with utmost care. The material is going to be um, anonymized. All the names, locations, any detail is kind of stripped away from the content. And basically, we want to understand um, you know people's experiences mm. um their their kind of reasoning um of what's going on in their life how you know how did they arrive at this position um rather than kind of the the uh detail of their right uh, yeah yeah cool look and um, anyone watching or listening i would encourage you to get in there and uh, contact sarah and uh talk have a talk to her i think it's something that is rising amongst Māori. I, I can see more and more people talking about it. Um, lots of people approaching me because I've sort of been the one on TV who was talking about it. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I would really encourage people who are who are atheists and haven't had a chance to talk about it. Having someone to talk to you about it sort of helps you come to terms with it in a lot of ways. And so I would encourage you, and um, you mentioned the Atua Kore group, on Facebook, I've been a member of that group for a few years. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a good place where I feel like I'm not alone. And and I think that's a, the benefit of social media. Yeah, mm. yeah, that's right. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, thank you too. Um, so, yeah, I think we can um, call it there. But, again, thank you very much for spending some time with me today. I'm sure oh, our no. audience is going to enjoy this. Thanks. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I really appreciate it.